perfect match is the portion of slab smith that we use to lay out parts on the slab, matching the veins or movement. To use it, we will need a cleaned up DXF and a photograph of a slab that was taken on our Pathfinder. The digital drawing of our part must have the perimeters joined and it must be saved in the finished layout position. This also must be exported or saved as a DXF. The needed photo of our slab must be taken on a calibrated Pathfinder so that the shape and size is accurate. We can use these two items in perfect match. We'll take the countertop pieces and arrange them onto the slab. We can watch the right side layout window to see that the veins will align on our finished countertop. When we are satisfied with the finished layout, we will save the parts in that position on the slab. Then we can bring this layout back into AlphaCam and program the parts as normal. So after running the program and assembling the countertop, it will look like it did in Perfect Match. There are a few rules to follow when creating or preparing the drawing. The seams should be drawn in and the parts should be separated. Each part should have a fully joined perimeter. As always, you can turn on the Show Breaks option to verify that each part perimeter only has one break. And you can zoom in on the break if needed to ensure that it is joined when the X goes away. You will want to save these parts in their final or finished layout position so you can see how the veins align with the seams. You can also add labels. You can use Park Industries Add Labels feature or if you add text through AlphaCam, leave it on the text layer. Use the output CAD function from the Home tab to save the file as a DXF. Verify that the file type is set as a DXF before you click OK. And then you should output all layers and the decimal place setting of 6 is fine. Click OK and then type in a file name and choose a location to save your DXF. We'll also need a digital photo of the slab. We can view and or open it in Slabsmith. Start by opening Slabsmith by double clicking on the icon. There are three parts to Slabsmith, Perfect Match, Slab Maker, and the Slab Manager. All the digital photos of the inventory of our slabs needed to be taken on the Pathfinder through Slab Maker. We can view those slabs at any time using the Manager button. Here we can change or browse through our inventory. If you click the Find button without any filter set, it will show every slab photo that was taken on your Pathfinder. You can roll the scroll wheel on your mouse to browse through the photos. And you can also see the inventory ID number on the text cursor indicator that's on your mouse arrow. And if you click on a digital slab image, you can see more of its properties. There's a quick measuring tool to the left of the enlarged view. You can click on the ruler to measure between any two points that you pick. You can also view the properties of the slab in the editor panel to the left. These properties were input when the photo of the slab was taken. You can see the length and width and it also calculated out the usable area. 
by knowing the inventory ID number of the slab makes it the easiest way to find it. The slab manager is only meant to view or edit properties in a slab. We can close out of the slab manager portion of SlabSmith by clicking on the red X in the top right corner. This will bring us back to the main interface of SlabSmith where we can choose Perfect Match. We'll open Perfect Match by clicking on the icon. Perfect Match is where we can bring in both the countertop DXF and the digital photo of the slab. It doesn't matter which order we open them. So I'll start with opening the countertop template. You can either use the open countertop template icon or you can go to File and choose Open Template. Then browse to the location where you saved your DXF and choose to open it. Notice how Perfect Match uses two windows to view the same countertop. The window on the right is meant only for the final layout display and the parts cannot be moved. You can, however, move the parts in the left window. Click on a part, hold down, and drag and drop to do so. Notice how when you select or click on a part in the left window, it displays which part is selected in the right window. You will also notice in the left window that you can have a part selected. That is shown with the green box around the outside. Each of these three parts has its own properties. You can view these by expanding the Properties page. And in the Template section, we'll be able to see the kitchen template that we brought in. We can even click on the plus sign next to it to expand it so we can see all the individual pieces of our countertop as well. And when you click on or select one of the countertop pieces, you will be able to see which one is selected in the window. And if you right-click on the countertop template or one of its components, you can choose to delete it if you wish. Now that we have a countertop opened in Perfect Match, we'll need to open a slab. We can either use the Open Slab icon or we can go to File and Open Slab. This portion of Perfect Match is similar to the slab manager. We could press the find button to view all slabs or you can use any of the filters. I'm going to use the ID number filter. The slab we viewed earlier was ID number 220. Now when I press the find button it will only show any slab that uses the ID number 220. Here is the original slab 220. We can click on it once to view its properties. And we can double click to open it in Perfect Match. Now the objective is to place the parts on the slab. You can move the parts from either window. If you click and hold down on the part in the right window and move your mouse, the part will move in the left window. This may be important when the parts are on the slab. The zoom works similar to how it does in AlphaCam. You can roll your wheel to zoom in and out. And it always zooms away from the arrow. You can also zoom to the extents by double clicking on the wheel. And to pan or move the part layout around in the drawing window, press and hold down with both the right and left mouse buttons at the same time and then move your mouse. And then I'll double click the mouse wheel so that the slab and all parts 
fill the extents of my window. Now to move the parts onto the slab, click and hold down your left mouse button while you move your mouse to drag the part onto the slab. I'll usually try to place the largest part first. And for this first basic example, we'll just place this part close to the edges of the slab. And it looks like I'll have room for this part right over about here, and I'm leaving it far enough away to leave room for my saw blade or jet or router bit to get in between. Note that when you click on a part, it becomes selected. We can see this part is selected by the green box around it. We can unselect it by pressing our escape key. Some of our commands, like rotate, will react different if the part is selected or not. Rotate can be found on the left sidebar. And I'm going to choose to rotate this countertop 90 degrees in the counterclockwise direction. And because the part was not pre-selected, it is asking me to select which part to rotate. And each time I click on it, it will apply that command, rotate counterclockwise 90 degrees. And now I can press escape to get out of the rotate command, so it doesn't rotate the part when I click on it to move it. And as I move the part onto the slab and into position, I am watching in the right window to see how the movement or veining aligns. You'll be able to see the seam line a little bit better if one of the two parts is selected. When you press Escape to deselect, you'll see the seam line disappears. I'll double click my scroll wheel in this left window so that we can view the slab to the full extents. I can get more of a 3D view of my kitchen layout in the right window by clicking down and holding my scroll wheel while I move the mouse. Then I can go back to a top view by selecting the top view icon from my top toolbar. And there's also an isometric view icon that I can choose as well. And when I have my parts laid out on the sheet so that I have a nice layout in my right window, I would like to save this. This session of Perfect Match can be saved as a layout. We can save the layout by going to File and choosing Save. There are many fields that we can use in the Save Layout window. These can become search filters when we go to open the layout at a later time. I'll just use the job number of 1478 and then I'll give it a job description as Betty's Kitchen. You can enter as much information as you'd like about this job before you save it. Saving a layout allows you to come back to this exact situation by going to File and Open Layout. You can choose to search for only the layout ID. I'll just choose to search the layout and enter in my job description, which was Betty's Kitchen. Now when I choose Find, it will find any job that had Betty's Kitchen in the job description, including my job, which we already have open. So I'll just close out of the layout search window. Another thing we can save is a picture. We can save a picture of the final countertop in the right window. I would like this finished countertop to be in an isometric view when I save a picture of it. I can save the picture by going to File, and then Export Picture. I don't feel there's any need 
to take a picture of the left window, so I'll uncheck it. You can set the quality of the picture. The better the quality, the larger the file to email. And then you can click Save and choose a location and a name to save it as. And we can save the DXF file of the parts laid out on the slab so that we can turn it into a program. So we'll go to File and Export a DXF. And we'll choose a location and give this DXF a name so that we can find it and bring it into AlphaCam to program it. Also note that it will take the name that we typed in and add in the slab ID that was in the DXF when we save it. This DXF is what we need to make the program. So we'll open it in AlphaCam. You can input the slab into AlphaCam either by choosing Input CAD from the Home tab, or you can also drag and drop the DXF into a new drawing. This works better if you have two monitors. I saved my Slabsmith DXF in Betty's Job folder. Here it is with the name Betty's Kitchen and the Slab ID. I can click on it, hold down, drag, and drop it into my AlphaCam drawing. I'll use my default Input CAD settings and click OK to finish opening the DXF in AlphaCam. And you can program as normal. Insert the table template if you wish. And your slab should be shown as sitting at 00, zero on your machine table if you used the three-stop method when you took the photograph on your Pathfinder. If you used the two-stop method when you took the photo, you may see that the slab is aligned with the bottom edge of your table, and it should be within the boundary of your table from the left to the right. Because you'll use the mark on the slab to align it to the stop on your table. And when you choose to auto toolpath and select the parts, note that everything in the drawing that we inserted is able to be selected to be cut. So you may have to deselect what you didn't want to be cut or simply pick just the parts that you want to be cut in your program. And then you can extend the cuts to the border if you wish, the border being drawn for you from Slabsmith. And then you can send your G-code to the machine. Thank you for choosing Park Industries.